Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Danielle aka Stitcherista here on YouTube and today is going to be a diamond paint with me while I continue working on Treasure Studios art Cherry Blossom by Lizzie Falcon and it will be a true crime story time. I'm going to try to pick a short one because if you can hear I am properly sick. Yes, have a cold. Yay, boo. But I wanted to show you my floor lamp came in yesterday from Wayfair. The one I had originally purchased from Amazon, I canceled and I went on Wayfair and this one is so much better and it's gorgeous. I absolutely love it. So it came yesterday. It was about $95. Um, the shade is glass and it's like frosted glass. And then the base of it, you can see, it goes pretty far. It's pretty tall. It's rose gold. I picked the rose gold one, so I absolutely love it. And so now I'm going to get you guys in the tripod and we'll chat. Okay. So I don't think my cold is as bad as what Bill had, but I'm still not feeling not anywhere near a hundred percent. Um, I was in bed by 9.30 last night. I did do a tiny bit of stitching. I did complete the O in Hocus Pocus. But I had a lot of soup yesterday. And just, not, I can't say that I took it easy because um, I did a lot of stuff still. I, I was downstairs by like three o'clock and didn't move until bedtime. <laughs> so I did get to relax a little bit. But you know, life still goes on, even though you're sick. Still got stuff to do. All right, what symbol am I doing? The U, okay. Yeah, I didn't do any more on this yesterday. After, there's like a piece of dust or something right here. I didn't do anything yesterday after this video. What the actual hell? Okay. Because I had other stuff I was taking care of. And uh, I did have some people buy me some coffee yesterday. So Don Biederman Hall bought me five coffees and says we are only a couple of years apart so here's to 40 more years of stitcherista on whatever iteration of youtube and new crafts there may be let's go yeah because who knows what kind of crafts are going to come out in even the next 10 years that i must try and do and fall in love with right so dawn thank you so very much and then Jill Miller bought me two coffees and says, Thank you, Danielle, for all the work you put into each video. Lord knows it's time consuming, and on top of that, you have a regular job. Continue being you, and don't ever let others get you down. Love your channel. Jill, thank you so much. And then finally, Leslie E. bought me three coffees and says, Sorry you're feeling poorly. Nothing worse than a summer cold. Thanks for all the tales. Yeah. It's been a hot minute since Bill and I have had a cold. I couldn't even remember the last time I had one. Probably because we were all wearing masks for a year and a half, right? But I do like to think that because I take extra vitamin C and um, I've been taking airborne for a couple days that I really think that has helped tamp down what could have been a full-blown just fucking nightmare for me. Um, this is manageable. I just took some day quill because I am that person. I have to work today. So, and what's so nice is that I don't have to talk at my job, which I'm thankful for on days like this where my throat's hurting. You can hear my voice. So yeah, I don't have to speak. And I'm hoping that today is actually short. I think it's going to be. I think. And, um, 
yeah, I didn't think I was going to lose any weight this week because, um, wow, that's a long story. I can't fucking read that one. I need to find the, sh uh, that one's, that one's not long. I, I need a short one. None of these are short. Uh, I'm looking. None of these are short. Wow. That's going to make for some good videos in the future. Oh, wait a minute. No, one, two, three. Uh, I think that's the shortest one I've seen. Yeah, okay. I'm going to read that one because that's the shortest one I saw. Okay. <coughs> mm. And most people would be like, why are you doing a video? Because I'm committed, right? Yeah, my job starts at 10. It is 8 o'clock and I got stuff to do. So I'm going to be doing stuff right up until the job starts. Okay. I forgot what I was even talking about before I said I need to find a short story. We'll just get right into the story. So today's story is Daniela Pug Pugiali. We're just going to call her Daniela, right? So the pictures were shocking. Even to homicide detectives who thought they had seen it all during their long careers, they had the power to distress. In one of them, a pretty blonde woman is grinning and giving a thumbs up sign beside the corpse of another much older woman. What? Thumbs up sign? Another shows the blonde with her mouth open, aping the expression of the deceased, like imitating, I'm guessing. Yet another shows her with fingers and thumb cocked like a gun pointing at the dead woman's forehead. The blonde in the picture was a 42-year-old Italian nurse named Danie Daniela Pagiali. The picture taker has never been named, although it is suspected that it must have been one of Daniela's nursing colleagues. Daniela would later issue a statement maintaining that the pictures were intended to be private, that the confidant had posted them online without her knowledge. She admitted that she was guilty of acting in bad taste, but insisted that there was no more to it than that. A patient had died and she'd taken a few inappropriate pictures. That was all, but the evidence would tell a different story. Mm, okay. Even before the sickening pictures of Daniela first came to light, administrators at the Umberto I Hospital in the town of Lugo in northern Italy were alarmed by an, by an unexplained spike in the death rate of patients at the facility. They were particularly concerned by the number of deaths that occurred while Daniela was on duty, 93 over a period of two years, three times as many as any of her colleagues, 38 between February and April 2014 alone. That does seem like an excessive amount, doesn't it? It was, of course, quite possible that this sudden elevation was a case of unfortunate happenstance. Hospitals all over the world experienced anomalies such as this from time to time, but there was also talk among the staff, most of it regarding Daniela and all of it alarming. Many of the nurses spoke of Daniela's malevolent and vindictive personality. Daniela, they said, regularly stole from patients. Lovely, that's fucking admirable right there. She fed them sleeping pills so that she wouldn't have to bother with them during her shift. She gave them laxatives just before her shift ended so that the nurses on the next rotation would have to deal with the unpleasant consequences. Wow. When a colleague witnessed Daniela stealing from a patient, Daniela responded by leaving a funeral bouquet on the hood of the woman's car in a mafia style threat. Can you even fucking imagine? <clears throat> Perhaps most ominously, 
Daniela had been heard to comment about troublesome patients. Leave it to me, I'll quiet them. She had even told a doctor, pondering what to do about a seriously ill patient, two vials of potassium and it will all be resolved, she is quoted as saying. God, well, how did, why did she even become a nurse, right? Hospital bosses clearly had to address the situation, but they were reluctant to act on mere insinuation. Daniela was, after all, a competent nurse of 17 years experience. She was known to her supervisors as hardworking and diligent, but then in March 2014, a series of incidents occurred which forced their hand. Over the course of a single week, five patients expired unexpectedly all on Daniela's shift. And I just remembered what I was talking about before I started looking for the story. My weight. I thought I wasn't going to lose any weight this week because I had stepped on the scale a couple times and I was still the same. But I stepped, now tomorrow's weigh-in day. I stepped on the scale today and I was at 173.2. That's 0.8 pounds I have lost. So I'm really hoping that holds true until tomorrow because I am steadily inching my way to the 160s and I have not worked out at all. It's been since last Thursday, so it's almost been a week. Yeah, let's go, right? Okay, back to the story. So one of those five patients that had died unexpectedly was Oriana Krika, who died on March 31st. Daniela had been asked to attend to the elderly woman when her nasal feeding tube started to leak onto the pillow. And a few minutes later, the patient was dead for no reason that anyone was able to fathom. The fuck? When two more patients died while being attended by Daniela on April 4th and April 5th, the hospital ordered autopsies but found nothing untoward. That perhaps lulled them into a false sense of security, but within days, another two patients were dead. And still the response by hospital authorities was tepid. Rather than call the police, they moved Daniela to the day shift in order to keep a closer eye on her, but it made no difference. On April 8th, another patient, 78-year-old Rosa Calderoni, was dead. And on the morning of her death, Rosa was being visited by her daughter, Manuela. When a nurse with close cropped blonde hair entered the room and told her to leave as she had things to do. So Manuela did as she was instructed, returning 10 minutes later after the nurse had gone. Her mother was now asleep, but Manuela noticed that a small glass vial was hanging from a stand and was being fed into her mother's arm via an IV line. It had almost emptied when Rosa started twitching maniacally and her eyes started rolling back. Manuela ran for help, but by the time she returned with the nurse, her mother was dead and the mysterious vial had also disappeared. Potassium? Maybe? A search was immediately carried out, and it was discovered that two vials of potassium chloride had gone missing from the hospital dispensary. This was not good news. Potassium chloride is a powerful compound which can stop the heart if given in sufficient quantities. It is, in fact, one of the three drugs used in executions by lethal injection, and it is also notoriously difficult to detect as it breaks down in the human body within hours. So that would explain why when the hospital did those autopsies that they found nothing untoward, right? So time was of the essence. The hospital ordered an immediate autopsy focusing on the elderly victim's aqueous humor, an area of the eyeball where the poison is known to accumulate. There they found a sufficient quantity of the drug to have caused a heart attack. In the interim, a syringe containing potassium was found in a disposal unit, and the dead woman's daughter had identified the nurse who had entered her mother's room as Daniela. Finally, the hospital administrators phoned the police and reported a possible homicide. So as police initiated their investigation into Rose's death, Daniela was fired from her job. But it would be October 9th before officers eventually arrested her and charged her with murder. So Daniela seemed unconcerned by the media storm that followed. I mean, can you even imagine? 
Indeed, she seemed to lap up all the attention, smiling and waving for the cameras. Her mood was rather less jovial when judges rejected her application for bail and ordered her to be held in custody until the outcome of her trial. Immediately after, Daniela issued a statement via her attorney in which she apologized for the photographs. She admitted that they were in bad taste, but denied that she had harmed Rosa or any other patient. And at the time of this story being written, Daniela remains in prison where she enjoys a certain notoriety and is inundated daily with fan mail and marriage proposals. What? Should she be proven guilty of the charges levied against her, she will go down in history as one of the world's worst medical serial killers. Wow. That was quite the story. Like, what the actual fuck? I don't know how you do that. I don't know, because as a nurse, I mean, you're supposed to... Um, You know, you're supposed to be helping your patients, keeping them safe, not killing them. I, wow. Okay. So we always end on a positive affirmation. Today is Wednesday, July 21st, and I'm sad because today was supposed to be my hair appointment, but there was no way I would have been able to go anyway. So like I said, it worked out. It worked out that my hairstylist is also under the weather and is not in her salon this week. Okay. So Wednesday, July 21st, this one is called an exercise in letting go of fear. Fear prevents you from showing up in your greatest capacity. Instead of letting fear dictate your circumstances, use it to shift you forward into uncharted territory. Without judgment, list everything that you are afraid of from the seemingly unimportant to your greatest fears. Choose five fears and decide on two action steps that you can take to move toward letting each fear go. Repeat as often as necessary. You know, there are things that um, we are all afraid of and um, I don't want to say that any of them are unimportant because anything that you fear or that you feel is surely valid. Um, but could it benefit us to work toward getting rid of those? Sure. Um, so all I can say is all you, all you can do every single day is get up and do the best you can. That's it. That's all you can do. So, as always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.